Hi friends, strangers, internet. I am here today with a super fun collaboration. And this is with one of my favorite people here on YouTube, Mia of Mia's Virtual Vanity. Mia is the perfect blend of incredibly intelligent, creative, and snarky. Her channel, she combines all these different parts of like herself that are just absolute joys to me. She creates whole looks based on artwork, classical paintings. She roasts brands and their bullshit and also criticizes the way we perhaps have a snap judgment at other brands. Like I just, she is far more articulate and has a vocabulary beyond my wildest dreams. I'm going to stop fangirling and just say thank you to Mia for doing this collaboration with me. This video is just awesome. So you may have seen the title of this video. These are Lepidoptera looks. If you perhaps had to Google that word like I did, uh, lepi lep <sighs> Lepidoptera is the order that includes butterflies and moths. And basically, this collaboration is inspired by this beautiful paper moths and butterflies that Mia reposted on her stories. And I commented, I sent her a message saying, those are gorgeous, that would be a great collaboration. And she was basically like, let's do it. We both picked two butterflies or moths from the, the image that you're seeing on the screen right now. I'm super excited to see what she does because she always inspires me with how she blends colors and creates different shapes with her, with her eye makeup. I'm going to go ahead and get into the looks. And if you found me through Mia, I just want to preemptively say thank you for being here and watching. And I hope you enjoy the two looks that I create. gonna jump right into look number one. So Mia shared the, these handmade paper butterflies and moths that this company makes. I was immediately drawn to this one butterfly. They're all gorgeous, but this one with the kind of periwinkle blue to purple, just my eye went straight to it. Just for reference, I pulled out single eyeshadows along with my purple ColourPop palette for colors for this look. I'm going in with a matte periwinkle blue on a pointed blender brush. I'm focusing that on the beginning of the lid, not quite to the inner corner, but just the beginning of the lid. My general thought process is to do periwinkle and then out to purple, also creating a bit of a winged out shape. So I'm dragging a little bit, dipping back in, placing it down and dragging outwards just a little bit. I'm also starting to create that upward shape. That's one really nice thing about these style of pointed brushes is that you have a bit of a edge to help you create a shape, but then the bristles will also help blend. Going in with a slightly beat up version of this uh, blender brush. You could probably use that same brush with a color, color switch, but I'm going in with a different one. And I am going to use this as the first purple that I put down. And I'm basically carrying it from where this line ends up to the brow bone. Apologies for the change in camera angle. So I have my blue brush again. I am blending these colors together. Also, because of the hooded eye struggles, when I have my eyes open, I want a little bit more of the blue visible. So I'm keeping my eyes open a little bit and trying to bring that blue up just a little bit more visible over the lid. Then 
there's parts of this look that are going to be more soft and um, blended out but this top line I don't particularly want the color to blend it picked up a little bit more blue on the very tip of that brush working on that line a little bit more and by working on I mean building it up bringing it up just a little bit higher and now I'm really leaning my head back and looking at the shape this way it's not how you will really see your the final eye shape but this is helping me also see the color and how it looks. This is a little bit accidental, but I'm I'm liking the look of carrying the blue up and blending it more into the purple along this top edge. I feel like it mimics some of the shading that you're seeing in the butterfly. I'm also working on making the color a little more intense on the lid. With pigments like this, it can be challenging. So if it doesn't look perfect, I wouldn't stress yourself too much. So part of this look, I've really envisioned this look as the purple kind of going into the blush without really much of a seam. So this effect that I'm working on with the, the eye look going into the cheek, I am using my lavender blush again, but we may be dipping into the eyeshadow as well to use as blush and that was going to be my next directive is unlike last video where i learned that blush cannot always be used as eyeshadow because sometimes it does irritate your eyes eyeshadow can be used as blush generally speaking i feel much safer saying that than than last video's situation for something like this where you're you're kind of connecting an eye and the cheek you just want to be pretty purposeful with how you place product i'm using a slightly smaller blush brush than i might normally use and i'm just dabbing it right where i see the eyeshadow kind of end and i'm going to carry it down almost creating a bit of a u-shape If you hear background rustling, I have cats playing and I couldn't interrupt that. I'm bringing the blush down to the apples of the cheeks. And the next step is that I want to create a more blended fade from the eyeshadow to the blush. So I'm going in with a big fluffy brush. I've picked up more of the color Kittenfish from ColourPop. That's the matte purple that's here and I'm stamping it on the edge that I had created already and then dragging down more following the blush shape. It looks really dramatic right now. The goal is to work on that a little bit more. We're also trusting the process. There's no additional product on this brush. We're going in with circular motions and just working on that blush. I'm also going in underneath the eye with that matte purple color. The eyes are a two in one process, so you're not really going to be able to finish one without the other. So I'm getting a rough sense of what I want on my lower lash line down. And putting down the lower lash line made me realize that I actually want the blush in this spot that I had skipped, I actually do want the blush there. Going back in with the fluffy brush with, again, no more product on there. Actually, now I am going to pick up a bit more of the purple eyeshadow, placing it right there. To get into the full kind of 80s blush draping, I'm going to put some of the blush up here 
and then in a way I'm using that to kind of connect everything together. So that's the like shape that we've created so far. If I had to do this again, I would not have created that dramatic shape. Instead, I really like how this is just flaring outwards. So I'm using my sponge, which definitely still has some concealer on it, to tap over the apples of the cheek highlight that I'd put on. To tap over the apples of the cheek blush that I'd put on. Yeah, I like that a little bit more. Just going in with more blush on my brush and just kind of blurring out the edges a little bit. Now that we've built the face portion of the color makeup, I'm going back into the eyes to work on that. I picked up more of the blue periwinkle color on this dense brush and I'm focusing that on my lower lash line and then on the lid. I'm using this brush all along the lower lash line with the blue and then I'm going to use the fluffier brush that had the purple with no additional product just to blend into that blue so that you get a similar blue purple at the lash line that blends into the light purple onto the face. The next step of this eye look, I have this color from Cleona Cosmetics that is a beautiful blend of periwinkle and purple. I want to add some dimension to the eye and also cover up some of the less than perfect parts of the eye makeup look. I am doing this without putting down NYX Glitter Glue because I don't want to disrupt the colors that are underneath. I'm also gonna be doing this with my finger just cause I feel like that for today. I'm focusing it on the lid. And now I'm heading towards the outer part of the lid and onto the upper part of the eye. Using this as a second blend out color for the blue to purple effect. So this has created some shine on this part of the eye and then I feel like you get a more intense shift on the lid. Let's build it up a little. These colors are stunning with the glitter glue but they work really nicely without. So the other beautiful thing about this butterfly that I'm referencing is the yellow paired with the blue purple colors. Yellow and purple are complementary colors so they're kind of built to bring out the best of each other. I'm going to create a pointed inner corner with, with a yellow shimmer on it to mimic that effect on the wing. I'm using a pointed q-tip to put down the glitter glue. I'm using a small pointed brush. So that is the yellow on the inner corner. To bring in a little bit of black into this look as a feature from the butterfly, I'm going to line my waterline with black. Wow, I actually feel like that really tied it all together. I am going to work on the other eye off camera, and then we'll be back. I want to do the finishing touches once both eyes are fully together. Okay, so I am back with my finished eyes and lips. I am feeling a bit more confident about my choices with both eyes done. And I have a NYX Butter Gloss on my lips in the color Angel Fruit Cake. The last step I was debating about but you know, I love my glow. So I have this new palette from Makeup Obsessions, which I believe is a long established part of the Makeup Revolution line, and they just brought it to Target in the US. This pinky toned highlight, I think would be a nice addition to the tops of my cheekbones into the apple. I'm using the same brush that I used for blush, and popping it right here and down to the apples.
Oh, and when I was off camera, I definitely put blush on my nose and I just put highlight there as well. Feeling sufficiently pinky, purpley, blue periwinkle now. That is my first of two looks. Just keep watching for another butterfly inspired look. Hello again, we're here for look number two. Now my second look is based on the orange and teal butterfly you are seeing on the screen. So my first look, I felt like the shape was a bit softer and this one, I want to do something a little bit perhaps weirder and slightly more structural. I am nervous to see how it turns out, but we'll be along the ride together. So for this eye look, I have pulled together another palette of single shadows. This eye has been primed with concealer, which is my normal protocol. We're picking up the matte orange. It's like a juicy tangerine color on another pointed blending brush. Basically, I'm, I'm aiming to create a rounded shape. The orange and the perhaps the ready orange will be in that shape. I'm starting on my lid because I do want color down there. I like to pick up a lot of product, but then kind of tap off the brush so that any immediate falling, so that, so that any immediate falling shadow will not end up on my face, but I'll get a lot of pigment. For the actual sketching out of the shape, I'm trying a slightly smaller brush. And I basically want to create this shape that extends out from here, but then is rounded kind of up. Just want to make sure I'm in the right frame for you all. With a brush like this, it may not lay down the color the nicest at first, like how it's patchy right here. But my hope is that it will frame everything out and then I can go back in and fill it in once I have the shape that I want. I want the rounded part to be a little bit more dramatic because again, with the hooded eye struggles, once my eyes open, you're not seeing much of it. I'm really shooting for a very round shape that just ends with that wing. Not even wing, it just ends at a point. I'm really liking that shape so far. And with this color, it's one of those that I can actually blend out nicely, but still keep the dramatic nature of that shape. The blend out is a little strong, so I'm going in with a clean brush. Next up, we're going in with the matte. I pulled more of a teal blue. You could definitely use whatever shade of blue you wanted. Going in with a thin, flat, like line brush. I'm going in on my lower lash line. I want to build the blue and it will meet out to the edge of the orange. Starting at the center of my eye because that's going to be the lowest point in the line. I want to keep that in mind. And I'm taking it along the shape of the eye. I'm sorry if you can't see this because I'm all up in the mirror. So it kind of looks like a wing, but basically what we did is we took that center point and followed the shape of the line and then ended the blue where the orange is at. I'm just building up the blue. It's really intense. I wanted a little bit more. 
like full opacity. So here's the part of the eye look that I am nervous about. After staring at that butterfly for so long, I got this idea to create a cut crease effect, but more of a circle than a full cut crease to mimic circles that are on the butterfly. I'm basically following the whip of my little brown, brown eyeball and then I just want to slowly build that shape up so that it is a more rounded shape. Yeah, the thing that I didn't want to happen or was hoping wouldn't happen happened and it transferred. So originally this shape was not the plan at all. Now that it's happened, I quite like it. So what I'm packing on top of the concealer is a basically glitter suspended in an eyeshadow. It's by JD Glow. It's one of their galaxy shadows. It goes by the name Blow. So if you're trying to recreate this look and you really like the glitter effect, I would use a white shimmer shadow. And then on top of that, I would pat on something like Pixie Crystalline, which is a liquid glitter style product. You could also use something like the Fenty Diamond Balm because this shadow is a brilliant dupe for that. And now it's all over my face, so I'm glad I like glitter. I'm gonna be a risk taker and I'm going to take the deeper orange color, put it on a little liner brush. The thought is to define the edges around the glitter. This part of my eye is so hard to get to. Okay, I thought that wasn't doing anything, but it actually added some nice depth and helped with the opacity of the orange, especially on the lid. Okay, so kind of like with the last look, because I have a few more touches to add, but I would like to see the face done first. So we have the other eye up to speed. I put black eyeliner in the waterline and I did mascara. There's two things I want to add on that I wanted to do on camera so that you all could be a part of the process. So once I put the black in my waterline, I realized that, that I want just a tiny bit of black in between the blue and the orange. So I'm going to use this brush again with black eyeshadow rather than liquid liner because I feel like I have more control with this and less fear. It's giving me a little bit of a thicker line, but I just want a little bit of definition going out to that edge. Yeah, left side is not as good as the right side, but that happens. So the other thing I want to play with is dots. Ever since I discovered Annette's Makeup Corner, uh, she actually reminded me of Dominique LDR, I think is the account. I think is her account on Instagram. I believe she was one of the original people that were in Battlelash, which was the group that Samantha Ravendahl came from. Anyway, so that creator, Dominique, a few years back did a lot of looks with like colorful dots all over the face. And they, and this was what I was very early into like my makeup exploration and also just had a kind of vague idea of what YouTube was. But I found her Instagram and I was just so into the idea. And so when Annette has been doing these dots lately, they remind me of her and of, so sorry for that story time, but that's kind of where I got so inspired by it. So I just picked up a white eyeliner at the drugstore, I'm thinking some dots down here and maybe up here and perhaps something on the inner corner, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna start with this. Moving forward, I may only just do dots in my right eye. My left eye is really challenging to do. I'm gonna do three here. 
I like how this one actually came out a little larger than the other two, so I'm going to try to make that last one a little larger. Probably should have photographed this look before adding the dots because because I did not do the best job at these dots. But I did what I did and gotta live with it. The 10 minutes I'm gonna have this on. So that is the final version of my Lepidoptera look number two. I'm getting better at that word. Yeah. This was a fun one. It totally turned out completely different from what I expected and I'm good with that. So we did it. We did two looks inspired by two different butterflies using lots of color, some new techniques, and we did it in collaboration with an amazing person, Mia, from Mia's Virtual Vanity. I'm pretty sure I already profusely raved in the intro to this video, just in case it's not obvious enough. I really respect and adore the stuff that Mia is doing on YouTube and her as a human being. I just want to send her a bunch of love. I know she's also been going through a lot of stressful stuff with work and I understand those feelings so much and I'm here for you if you need anything, if I can help you from across the, the world a little bit. If you haven't discovered Mia's Virtual Vanity, I highly recommend you check out her channel. Her Instagram is full of gorgeous flat lays and eye looks that she creates. Her channel is thought provoking and inspiring and super creative and I think I'm finally done with my profuse compliments. If you're new here from Mia's channel, again, thank you for, uh, for coming by. If you enjoyed this, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around. Then you can see what other ridiculous eye looks I have possibly in the works. Thank you for spending a part of your day with me. I hope to see you again real soon. Bye friends.